Hello everyone, my name is Robert and this is part 5 in a series where I am building a blog and we're using a number of technologies to do this uh, on the back end we have Microsoft Light Switch on the front end we have pure HTML JavaScript and we're using uh, JavaScript libraries like Handlebars, JS and jQuery and in part 4 we did a lot of work. I mean, part four was a monster of an episode. It was basically two episodes worth of content in my mind. Uh, so this time, I thought we'd do something a bit lighter and a bit more relaxing. And uh, what you can see in front of us, in front of me, here is we've got our JavaScript, uh, our content folder open in Light Switch with all our CSS. And I thought what would be really good is to go and sort of set up some colors and uh, get everything sort of nice looking a lot better. Because also our blog itself if we launch our browser and we'll lights we'll wait for light switch to come up first you'll see light switch is coming with its nice sort of bluey color scheme here um, it looks very good but if we have a look at our website well, which is kind of boring black on white um, and we really aren't looking that good so I thought, why don't we go and improve all of this and try and get some sort of a color theme going and some styling and things like that. It'll make for a nice sort of episode, just showing you some of the tools that I use for this. Th that said, do not expect this to be an episode where I'm going to explain how to be do web design because I'm not a web designer uh, by any stretch of the imagination. But this is hopefully give you some ideas. So let's start off with Cooler. Cooler from Adobe, and I'll put the links to all the tools I show you today. is a really quite is a really cool tool for finding matching colors. So normally, what you would do is you come in here, you'd pick a color set. So we could have complementary will give you two colors. Uh, triad will give you uh, three color points to work with, and so on. And there's various ones. So let's start with Triad, and what we want is we can then grab these points and we can move them around, as you can see, like this. For some reason, I, I seem to have extra points, but anyway, uh, it's because we have five colors. So you'll see that these all line up on the same axis. So we can pull them all in and adjust all of them. So this one, I'd really want, you know, we kind of want it a nice, uh, let's do purplish color scheme. Let me try to get for like a Visual Studio purple. So we'll have that sort of as a Visual Studio purple color. Uh, this guy over here, I really want it to be quite what sort of a muted color. Rich color there and a rich color there. And we'll bring this guy in as well. Let's see if we just push all those out. Can we bring you in? Let's use this option. And kind of make that almost completely white. Um, and so we can use this and you can see as I'm moving it around it's going to select color palette so complementary colors to the orange uh, to the purple I'm using here would be an orangey color and a sort of greeny color which is not bad uh, we can also then just switch to custom because I really don't like this green I think it's a really ugly green um, so actually what we'll do is just for our palette we'll have a look. it does help to have a, a darker color there Let's just go back to Triad. Ooh. And so this is kind of just that you're spending time playing around with this sort of stuff and trying to find nice c matching colors and fi finding what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Uh, we can also do something like <laughs> compound colors where it's got a nice sort of more balanced range. You see, if we go for that purple, then these are sort of lighter background colors. See, that, that works quite nice. See, that's quite a nice color palette. We have sort of a rich purple color. And then um, we can have sort of more browny colors. Yeah, let's do that. That looks quite cool. So we have this sort of strong accent color in the purple. And we'll just maybe brighten it a little bit. And then we have these sort of more muted colors for the backgrounds. So that's quite cool, we, and we can get this as um, a theme, so we'll just save this as and ooh, I don't have that. I don't. I probably can't save it if I don't have an account, right? That's fine. 
So we've got some colors now. Now what I'm going to do, because Light Switch uses jQuery Mobile, and I want my Light Switch site and my uh, blog to kind of have the same palette, let's go to jQuery Mobile. And um, we are using, if you have a look in here, we go into the scripts folder, we're using jQuery Mobile 1.3.1. So we can come in here, Lady Stable Version, and what we're going to use is the Themes option. So we're going to go off to Theme Roller, and Theme Roller is a tool uh, that jQuery Mobile provides for building custom themes. So here is a sort of simple gray color thing. Um, and you can see here is our ability to bring in Adobe Cooler Swatches. If we had saved ours, we could actually bring it in via this. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is uh, come back here and cause this is like my main color. Uh, let's go and come back here, colors. Paste that one in. Now we have three colors of white, which is not what I was hoping for. Hmm. Come on. Let me pick a color that I want to use. Don't tell me this is all will be like lowercase or something. Okay, that there's our purple. So I said we would like to use this purple as a sort of accent color, so I can just sort of drag it on. And so I can give us a sort of nice sort of rich purple there. Uh, I think we'll do links as well in purple. These sort of purple links. Um, let's jump back here. Uh, this is kind of going to be our background color, I think, because it gives a nice sort of muted effect. So once you we'll come here, we're going to paste this in. Okay, and we'll just drag this on as the background color. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, is there anywhere else I should worry about this color to be used? Hmm. No, I don't think so. I think that looks all right. It looks good. Um, I keep pressing Alt and I don't want to do that. Uh, okay, so we'll use this brownier color for borders, I guess. So let's go in here. CCA and it seems like it it just will won't listen to me until I go and do it again. So I'm not sure why. And so we can also just drag things into here like this. You'll see instead of dragging it onto the actual thing. So if you're trying to find a specific piece, so you can see our text color is like a dark is like a dark gray. Do we have a nice text color? No, we don't. Um, actually, let's just go set this text color to be sort of like more of a pure black. And uh, we don't have any shadow stuff on that. Background for our header bar is that color. Do we want to go and do a different color? We could do this color here. So let's go and set this one up. Uh, so we'll paste that one in. Just Hi. I've broken it. Paste. Okay, fine. Don't listen to me. I have completely broken it now. Okay, so there's our lighter gray. Uh, so I say I went background on the headers to be that color. Yeah, that looks very cool. Um, it does look like it drops shadow on that. Let's get rid of that drop shadow. Let's set that to zero. Okay. And I'm actually going to use the same dark color here as we had before. Just sort of keeping that style going. Go this sort of darker purple color around there. Um, so that looks pretty good for those. Uh, once again, they have a city color there, which I don't want. And here we'll s once again set the text color to full black. Uh, for buttons, so 
all of these guys. Text color uh, for black. Right, and then background. So let's go drag something and see what changes if we play with the background. Ooh, look at that. Um, hmm. So we do have this color, it's kind of like a s steel blue color. Um, so let's go and play, use this one. Okay, and let's actually just drag that on there. That's getting very purpley though. It's like very, it's a little bit too much almost. Dude. Maybe we do something. Find a better color. Mm. I'm just not seeing enough contrast on those. Um. Okay, well let's go with that. I mean, let's go with that color there. So we had that color for there, and then we'll go a darker shade for the borders, just so the borders stand out, I guess, a bit. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not great. It's not ideal, but it will work for now. Okay. Let's see. That's but when we roll over the buttons. So for whatever reason, our borders look terrible when we roll over buttons. Um, so actually, let's go with even darker borders when we roll over buttons. Yeah, see, that makes it like stand out a bit more. That's quite nice. I like that. Um, and let's see, all our text colors are set there. Let's get like pure black. We'll set that to zero and zero. What we probably could do is also, let's see what happens if I play with this. How that changes like that little gradient thing. So what happens if we do this? Uh, gradient, 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 gradient. You know, we kind of get a flatter color there. I mean, really, what you could do if you really want sort of flat styling, do that. Let's do that on all of them. So we'll start at. Um, so that looks pretty good when you kind of hover over it, we get like a little bit of a bubble out of it. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Copy that out of there. Paste that into there. Paste that into there, so let's stay really flat. Then this one can be just slightly different. Keep at least the same sort of color theme. Yep, like that, and then if we press a button, it looks really bad, so once again, let's go make sure that we keep some standards here and we'll do the same sort of thing here um, actually we'll swap it around so you get an effect of a button being pressed see like that that switching of the gradient really makes it feel like the button got pressed cool so now we have an okay looking theme it doesn't look horrible amazingly enough <laughs> for the type of stuff I do um, fun family in here uh, well, you know, we're going to run this on Windows, so Sago so UI, and can we do light? Yeah, we can do Sago so UI light, which is always good. Um, our active state. Text color, I have no idea what that is. All right, let's go and set that to zero. Uh, corner radiuses. So we can square these off, it kind of, kind of looks a bit like the new Apple OS. We're going to have a bit more Microsoft sort of styling. Um, and we'll have very rounded sort of little tool icons. The icons themselves, black icons, white icons, white icons, with disk, without disk, with disk. And what happens if we play with this? Uh, that really gives us the ability to change the disk color. So let's grab our purple and use that purple there, see if that, how that looks. Um, doesn't look that good actually. Maybe we should just go with like black on that. Mm. Oh, it's because it's got opacity on it. So there would be full black. And here would be our full purple. 
That looks not bad. Cool. Box shadows. And zero on this. Once you get them. So now all kind of very flat looking. Everything's looking really cool here. Yeah, that's looking nice. We got a sort of very rounded button there. But it looks good. Um, yeah, let's go with that. I think that's not a bad idea. So we'll say download. And we'll just download a. Let's, what should we call this? Uh, the Let's Code blog theme. So we'll download that. Which will give us our themes and images. So what we can do with this now is we'll go to uh, desktop backslash projects, which is where I've been doing all of this in here. And so this is for the HTML client. So here are the images. And so what we'll do is we'll just take all of this in and replace it. And since we have source control, I'm not worried about what's going on, about breaking too much. So we'll also come in here, there's our CSS, and it's also been minified for us. So we'll come in here and we'll paste that in. And so now what we'll do, so we've gone and put that in, we should actually just go make sure everything is in place. So there is, is. let's go add it to our project. Uh, we're running at the moment, so that's why we can't add. So let's include it. And now that we have done that, we just need to edit our page here. Uh, so there's the light switch theme, light, and I think we're going to stay on the light theme because we do have that kind of light feel to it. Um, and there's a user customization theme, and so on. So I think, if I remember correctly, it's the jQuery mobile one that we toss away. Uh, where did my one go? So we'll grab that, and I think we can just actually replace this one. And let's just see what happens. Obviously, you know, the, uh, the more changes you make, every time you upgrade your light switch, you have other things you need to worry about. Um, like in the moment, I really have broken it. <laughs> wow, that went bad. Mm. <laughs> okay, let's put that one back. And um, what happens if we just drag in our theme into here like this and just go, okay. Uh, actually, let's, not do the let's do the minified one, just for the sake of always doing the right thing. That looks better, but really, look, we've got the square sides, um, we just don't have the colors. Ooh, there was a bit of purple there, did you see? Hey, look, there's some purple. A bit more roundedness. Ooh. So we didn't get quite as much purple as I was expecting. Um, I mean, we are getting quite a bit, though. Um, the button on the toolbar, though, is, is hardly visible down there, though. Uh, we all have to figure that one out as well. So this looks a lot flatter. Um, a lot more interesting, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. Right. So that's what we can do for, for Light Search. We can go and play around with its themes and th so on. What about our blog? Well, we can do this as well. So let's go and add in a content folder in here. And... One of the things that I use is I don't use CSS. Uh, I use a, a standard called Less. And so Less is like CSS, but with awesomeness. So let's go blog. And we'll hit save. Hello. Um, and you want it needs something to start with. Um, I don't really care, just save. The reason I want that is because the moment you hit save in here, in the less window, the, it generates the CSS, and so that will generate the file as well. So our C CSS file, but also generate a minified one. So I should now be able to go in here, and just drag that one in, so I have the minified CSS ready to go. Right, so um, once again, we want to do the same sort of stuff from Cooler. So uh, we'll just use, we can do background color here. Um, and so what's really great with less, so, well, let me show you, this is how we do it with CSS, is we go back to Cooler, we get rid of that, and we'll copy that guy out of here, because that's what we want for the background color. Um, 
Cool. And then our font color, uh, we'll do black. And then um, for H1, since we do have that, I think we'll do you know color like this. And so we kind of start structuring it this way. Um, font family should be Sago UI, and I think font weight should be lighter. So if we run this now, what we should get is let's go where yeah. yeah. So we got kind of like a, is that sign like yellow color? Uh, yellow didn't come out as nicely as I'd hoped, actually. Um, that's quite sad, actually. But you can see that at least with the font is coming up, and we got that. Um, let's just go and adjust this one here. We'll use this tool in here just to lighten this up. It came out so, so very, very yellow. And so what's great with the Visual Studio tools is you'll note that as I'm working with the color here, uh, there are the colors from my document. There's the purple and there's the kind of whitey color that we have in the background and so on, uh, which is great to keep that consistency. But more than that, we can also do variables. So I could say background, color, and just take this guy up here and put that there. And now I can have a single place to define it. Um, so we can say font color and add highlight color. So we define these sort of properties once, these variables once, and then we can go and replace throughout the document. Um, and instead of having to like hard code our fonts the whole time or colors, we can go and do that. Um, so that looks okay. Uh, it does, I think our page needs a bit of work here. So we could do with wrapping this all in a div actually, just so we'll float the whole thing. Um, so all the content here, so let's do this. Control KS, HTML, div with a class, tab, thank you. And the class for this should be content. So we'll go back here div.content and I could say that should be um, let's make that like 800 pixels hmm. F5 um, then margins it will be Top zero, left auto, like that. Um, actually, if we change this to 50%, there's a way we can float this in the middle somehow. Hmm. Let's just do that and we'll have. Um, oh, you know what it might be is it, it just might not be refreshing. We'll just restart. Sometimes I get this with tools like this. Um, it'll be localhost. Um, what is this? Why well, my th my brain is just so slow today. Yeah, that's floating nicely. I don't know, sometimes it's just, let's not think about, it. there we go. Now it's got a nice little floating blog thing there. So it fits nice in the middle. Um, and then what else do we have on here? Let's see what else should be styled. These should also be styled, so these are the H2s. So you'll see this is where this idea comes in really useful. H2, you'll see it's picking up the fact we have that. Duplicate styles, we'll just set that to H2. Will you refresh? No. Chrome, will you refresh? No. I don't know if it's got it in here. Yeah, it has the colors in there. Control F5. 
So weird, it's just like there's some sort of cache hitting it. Uh, what else should we set in here? Um, that looks all good. The footer is probably not that awesome either. So let's get that improved. Uh, I'm in the wrong HTML. Uh, so where is our footer? Div class footer. So we'll come back to our CSS. Oh, this. Um, so this will be div footer. And here, what we'll do is we'll actually have a different background color. And where is our Chrome environment? And just to be, well, yeah, I didn't like that blue that much. Uh, actually, we'll grab that brownie color for the footer. Um, did I call that hash? That's not silly, silly me. Right, we'll save that there. Um, and since that's kind of, uh, let's just say width on this should be 100%, height should be um, 30 pixels. And we'll restart just to see how that looks. There we go. So that link there looks really ugly, but we've got that footer looking kind of the way I expected it to. So we need to fix up that link in there, um, in the footer. So what we can do, so normally what you do now is because you like want to style the, the tag, so it would be div footer and then space A like that um, for child element. And you can see Visual Studio when I formatted my document, like indented that to say it is a child element. But because we're using this, you know what it might be? It's just like Visual Studio is running the whole time. And it's not thinking to update whatever value. So what I can do now is I can just say like this, which is valid less, um, where I have a child element within a main element or style, like this. And so then this will apply in here. So then this will be color white. And it will be font decoration. The font decoration. Text decoration. Save. Yeah, see that looks much better for maybe a bit of padding on that. So I wonder if I just stop that there, will this keep running? Yeah, see, I keep running. Um, let's see what happens if I don't need this. Uh, so I want the margin. I want to play margin top. And we'll just put, maybe a little bit bigger. So let's give it a 10 pixel margin on top. Ooh, wrong place uh, for the footer. So now I've saved that. Let's see what happens if I just refresh in here. Control F5. Build. F5. There we go. Okay, so I actually need to do a build. It's probably just got to do with the minification. Um, I get, and the, the converting is just needs that. Um, margin, so margins are on the outside. I want to do some padding. So I'll do padding left, because it does feel a bit close to that one there. So we'll do t padding left to 10 pixels. I don't know why it really wants to rebuild every time, but that's just a nuance of it. So let's push that in just a bit. So that looks a lot nicer. Um, cool. So we've got st that starting to look a bit better. Uh, maybe what we should do is we should go back here and grab that color that I didn't like so much and put that back in. And then what I will do is go across to light switch because I really did like the sort of silvery color it had in our one. And if we come in here. Ooh, lots of stuff. Um, I have no idea. I'm sure it was like, what was it, button? Oh, here we, 
like uh, Ethereum stake. All right. Was that the colors? Didn't look like the color. Let's use that color. That looks kind of like a gray color. All right. So let's go back and we'll finish this up as the kind of the last thing here. Div content. So this will be background color. that and it will do a border um, I wonder if say border and so what the border style uh, one so we want the width the first that'll be one pixel solid and then the color and what I'll do is I'm going to grab this and actually take this out of here um, and call this a at lighter background. And then here, instead of doing a specific color, I'm going to say, you know, use the lighter background, but just darken it by 15%. Okay, and so when I hit save, see how it's gone and put the lighter one in there, and then it's done a darker one there. Uh, that doesn't look darker enough for me, actually. Uh, let's make that 20% save. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Okay, so we can come in here, F5. Ooh, look at that. It's looking like a real thing. Um, it's probably not wide enough. Um, let's at least do min width of 800. And then... We do want some padding in here because everything does feel a little bit too close. So padding on this should be 10 pixels all the way around. Mm. Um, all right. Yeah. That looks pretty cool. And so what we should have now is if I shrink this down, at some point, see it will make min width, min width, min width it's about there's 800 and it stops doing it. So it's quite cool and minimum width should be that width. Yeah, eh. That looks good. I, that actually does look okay. I mean, it, it looks like we're starting to actually have a real blog with real content in it. Um, well, we don't have real content, but we'll get to that. Cool. And I think that's probably a nice point to end. Just the, the idea of today was just to show you some of the stuff you can do with style sheets. And so we could play with light switch to style sheet. We could play with um, the style sheet using less as well. And so just those various different things that are available to us to improve the way things look. So with that, I'm going to say thank you, and I will see you soon. Cheers.